Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Reims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 34 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 35 in the RSV. For David himself. Judge thou, O Lord, them that wrong me. Overthrow them that fight against me. Take hold of arms and shield, and rise up to help me. Bring out the sword, and shut up the way against them that persecute me. Say to my soul, I am thy salvation. The overall message here is, of course, that we plead for God to take action against our enemies on our behalf. Some of the terms used here are interesting as well. Overthrow implies that the enemy will lose their power. Arms and sword refer to causing damage to the enemy, to at least the point where they can't continue their attack. And shield and salvation imply defending us from the attacks of our foes. Let them be confounded and ashamed that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and be confounded that devise against me. In this part, David specifically refers to people who try to harm his soul, possibly evildoers trying to lead him into sinning against God. Let them become as dust before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord straighten them. Dust is scattered by the wind, so we ask for our enemies to be scattered, because they can't do nearly as much damage if they're not united. Straighten, when it's spelled like this, means putting someone into distress or problems. This isn't for the sake of causing harm, of course, but so that evil people will be able to cause less harm due to having problems of their own. Let their way become dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. You know what happens when you're running from a fast enemy on dark, slippery paths. For without cause they have hidden their net from me unto destruction, without cause they have upbraided my soul. You hide a net so the prey won't see it until it's too late to escape from it. It's the sneakiest way to catch somebody. Upbraiding someone without cause would be like accusing them of something they haven't done. This was done to Jesus, and apparently to King David as well. It's something that lots of good people have had to deal with, in fact. Let the snare which he knoweth not come upon him and let the net which he hath hidden catch him, and into that very snare let them fall. We ask that the evil plans of our enemies will backfire on them. But my soul shall rejoice in the Lord, and shall be delighted in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like to thee? Who deliverest the poor from the hand of them that are stronger than he, the needy and the poor from them that strip him? We have to give God credit for the good things he does, and also we see another mention of bones here. This probably means that David will praise God even after death, though it may also mean that every part of him praises God. Unjust witnesses rising up have asked me things I knew not. Liars have asked me to give testimony about things I never witnessed. When a person is a liar, they'll also probably be deceptive in their tactics as well. They repaid me evil for good, to the depriving me of my soul. When I did good things for them, they betrayed me. It tempted me to do evil, even though I know I shouldn't. But as for me, when they were troublesome to me, I was clothed with hair cloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer shall be turned into my bosom. However, in spite of their actions, I didn't forget to remain humble and reflect on the state of my own soul. As a neighbor, and as an own brother, so did I please. As one mourning and sorrowful, so was I humbled. I treated them as I would my own relatives, despite my sadness over their treachery. But they rejoiced against me, and came together. Scourges were gathered together upon me, and I knew not. In response, they tried to ambush me by colluding with one another. They were separated, and repented not. They tempted me. They scoffed at me with scorn. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. They did everything they could to try to harm me and lead me astray. Lord, when wilt thou look upon me? Rescue thou my soul from their malice, my only one from the lions. We ask that God will pay attention to our prayers and save us from our enemies. I will give thanks to thee in a great church. I will praise thee in a strong people. Let not them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me who have hated me without cause, 
and wink with the eyes, for they spoke indeed peaceably to me. And speaking in the anger of the earth, they devised guile. Again, we offer to praise God gratefully if he saves us from those who hate us and him. And they opened their mouth wide against me. They said, Well done, well done, our eyes have seen it. His enemies accused him of something he hadn't actually done. Thou hast seen, O Lord, be not thou silent, O Lord, depart not from me. Arise and be attentive to my judgment, to my cause, my God and my Lord. Please notice how I have seen the evil in their actions, and vindicate that judgment. Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy justice, and let them not rejoice over me. As I have judged the actions of others, judge me. If I am just, let me be vindicated, so that evildoers have nothing to celebrate. Let them not say in their hearts, It is well, it is well, to our mind, neither let them say we have swallowed him up. Don't let them be under any illusions about having claimed victory over me. Let them blush, and be ashamed together, who rejoice at my evils. Let them be clothed with confusion and shame, who speak great things against me. Make sure the people who are happy about my suffering are ashamed of it. Let them rejoice, and be glad, who are well pleased with my justice. And let them say always, The Lord be magnified, who delights in the peace of his servant. The ones to celebrate and be happy should be the people who love justice, who can benefit from seeing the justice of God done. And my tongue shall meditate thy justice, thy praise all the day long. If this happens, I'll always praise God. This psalm is structured differently than some of the earlier ones, which begin with mourning over misfortune and end with praise of God. This psalm, it seems, was written during harder times, when David was suffering from the malice and betrayal of his enemies, and so the whole psalm has the same flavor, pleading for relief from his problems and justice against those who hate him, and promising constant worship of God in exchange. It's a psalm of desperation. Still, even when things were at their worst, David's thoughts turned to God first, which is exactly what he should have done. We should do the same in our own worst times. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.